hi guys in the previous lecture that is the lecture number 31 we have covered the class c commutation that is also known as impulse or complementary commutation now in this lecture that is the lecture number 32 we will start class d commutation that is the voltage commutation and this is very very important because till now the question has been framed in gate exam from class d commutation only so let us try to understand the class d commutation that is the voltage commutation this is the circuit diagram of class d commutation the upper diagram this is the diagram circuit diagram of class d commutation here main thyristor and auxiliary thyristor. this is the main thyristor and this is the auxiliary thyristor ta okay and here inductor and capacitor and diode are connected in this manner and we have to turn off this main thyristor my job is to turn off this main thyristor so let us see how i am turning off this main thyristor i am assuming that initially the voltage drop across this capacitor this is the capacitor right so voltage drop across this capacitor is equal to supply voltage and polarity of voltage drop across this capacitor is from plus to minus like this this is the assumption for t less than zero the voltage drop across this capacitor is vs and the second assumption is load current is constant okay current load current is not changing it is constant means we are dealing with highly inductive load okay so these all commutation circuit that the class d commutation is divided in three mode mode one mode two and mode three we will see separately one by one first we will talk about the mode one in mode one what i am doing i am turning on the main thyristor at t is equal to zero see the waveform tm this is the main thyristor right so main thyristor is on at t is equal to zero so the moment when main thyristor will be on at t is equal to zero means it will be sorted means it will be sorted like this okay and auxiliary thyristor we have not turned on so it will be off so this capacitor will discharge from tm main thyristor diode will be in forward bias because positive plate of this capacitor is connected with anode so diode will be sorted and this inductor so overall this is the discharging lc circuit okay so the moment when i will trigger this main thyristor tm so this tm will be sorted and this capacitor will discharge across this inductor means capacitor will give energy to this inductor and again this inductor will behave like a current source and it will give energy to this capacitor and the at the end the voltage drop across this capacitor will be somehow like this from minus to plus got it same thing is happening the moment when voltage drop across this capacitor will be from minus to plus here diode see let us see this is plus and this is minus this diode will be open circuited because this diode won't allow the further current flowing in reverse direction okay so in mod 1 i am triggering this thyristor tm due to which the voltage across this capacitor get reversed this capacitor will deliver energy to this inductor again this inductor will deliver energy to this capacitor so if i will ask you what is the capacitor current ic of t see here ic of t this is discharging lc circuit right ic of t will be icp sin omega naught t where icp is equal to vs under root c by l and omega naught is equal to 1 by under root lc these all things i have explained you in lecture number six in discharging lc circuit the capacitor current i am getting icp sin omega naught t so capacitor current after t is equal to zero i will get icp sin omega naught t like this this is the capacitor current it will be sinusoidal from zero to t1 got it the capacitor current will be sinusoidal after pi the current is not going to the reverse because of this diode so current i will get capacitor current i will get only till pi this is the pi got it after pi the current will not be reversed because of this diode connected in series with inductor and capacitor is it fine so finally ic of t is equal to icp sin omega naught t and this is the maximum current that is equal to icp okay now tell me what is the voltage drop across capacitor see voltage drop across capacitor vc of t i will get vs cos omega naught t means it will be cosine wave so cos omega naught t will be like this it is pi by 2 and at pi it will be minus vs if you will put cos pi that will be, you will get vc of pi that is equal to minus vs from 0 to t1 
the capacitor voltage is changing from plus Vs, this is plus Vs to minus of Vs. So, capacitor current is equal to ICP sin omega naught T and capacitor voltage is equal to Vs cos omega naught T. This we have discussed in lecture number 6 and I have drawn the waveform of capacitor current as well as capacitor voltage. Got it? Now, you see in mode 1, in mode 1 what will be the output voltage? See, thyristor, main thyristor is conducting, right? So, main thyristor is conducting means output voltage is equal to Vs only. So, in mode 1 output voltage is equal to Vs like this, okay? So, from 0 to T1 this is the mode 1, this is the mode 1, okay? Now, if I will ask you what is the current flowing in main thyristor? that is the ITM, this is the main thyristor current. So, main thyristor current will carry the current of load current as well as the capacitor current. See, when I will trigger this main thyristor, then capacitor current will flow from left to right in the main, main SCR, okay? And load current will also flow, uh, flow from the main SCR only. So, what will be the ITM? In this case, the ITM is equal to I0 plus IC of T in mode 1 okay so i naught let us say this is i naught and it is constant so if i will add i naught and ic of t i will get itm so itm will be somehow like this i naught plus icp sin omega naught t from 0 to t1 okay now see the mode 2 in mode 2 what i am doing see at the end of mode 1 what is the voltage drop across this capacitor? The voltage drop across this capacitor is from minus to plus and that is equal to Vs, okay? Now in mode 2, mode 2 will start from this. This is the mode 2, okay? This is mode 2. Mode 1 is from here to here. So in mode 2, what I am doing? I am triggering the auxiliary thyristor. Ta is on at T is equal to this much. Okay, so when TA will be on, this auxiliary thyristor, I am triggering this auxiliary thyristor at T is equal to T2. Got it? So the moment when auxiliary thyristor will be turned on, see the voltage drop across main thyristor. Let us say this is TM, okay, and this capacitor is charged in this manner. So I can say that this TA is triggered means positive plate of this capacitor is connected with cathode and negative plate of this capacitor is connected with anode. So it is minus, it is plus and this is capacitor. So the moment when TA will be triggered, the voltage drop across main thyristor will be negative. See here, this is VAK. So VAK will be less than zero because of the polarity of voltage drop across this capacitor in this manner. Okay, so VAK will be less than zero means this main thyristor will go into the reverse blocking mode and it will turn off. So the moment when you will turn on this auxiliary thyristor that is TA, this thyristor main thyristor will be in off state. It will go into the off state. Got it? So at omega T, this is at T is equal to T2, the main thyristor current. What will the main thyristor current? ITM will be equal to 0 because it will go into the off state. When TA will be on, then ITM will be 0 and it will go into the off state. So, in mode 2, what will happen? See, in mode 2, the supply voltage is again charging the capacitor. The capacitor voltage is from minus to plus. So, supply voltage again charging the capacitor from plus to minus. So, capacitor voltage drop across this capacitor will decrease from minus Vs to 0 and again it will charge to plus Vs like this, okay? So this is the case of mode 2. In mode 2 what we are doing? We are triggering this main thyristor, we are triggering this auxiliary thyristor Ta in mode 2 that is at T is equal to T2, okay? So the moment when I will trigger this auxiliary thyristor, the voltage drop across main thyristor will be minus Vs, means it will be in negative. So, main thyristor will go into the reverse blocking mode and it will turn off. And again, the capacitor voltage, the voltage drop across capacitor, the VA supply voltage charging the capacitor. So, capacitor voltage increases from minus Vs to 0 and again it is charged to plus Vs like this. It will charge to plus Vs in mode 2. 
got it now see one more point when ta will be on then what will be the output voltage at that time v not will be what see when ta will be on then at that time the capacitor the voltage drop across this capacitor will be from minus to plus and it is equal to minus vs okay and ta is on means it is connecting like this and this is v not and this is supply voltage okay in this manner because main thyristor will be off when ta will be on so apply kvl you will get minus vs minus vs plus v naught that is equal to zero apply kvl minus vs voltage drop across capacitor will be minus vs plus v naught is equal to zero so v naught will come out to be 2 vs so the moment when ta may auxiliary thyristor will be on at that time the output voltage will be equal to 2 vs this is the output voltage that is equal to 2 vs cut it so where ta will be on then output voltage will be equal to 2 vs and it will start decreasing linearly like this because the capacitor will charge from minus vs to plus vs and when this capacitor will become equal to plus vs the output voltage will be equal to zero see when this capacitor voltage will be equal to plus vs then output voltage will be zero so it is like this so output voltage waveform I will get somehow like this voltage drop across capacitor the waveform voltage drop across capacitor will be like this and output voltage will be like this so if I will have to explain all the mode then how will I explain see at t is equal to 0 I am triggering the main thyristor okay so the moment when main thyristor will be triggered then this cap voltage across capacitor will discharge from uh, main thyristor diode and inductor so all the energy present in the capacitor will uh, will be given to the inductor and again inductor will give energy to the capacitor and at the end of mode 1 the voltage drop across this capacitor will be minus to plus like this okay after that in mode 2 what i am doing i am triggering the auxiliary thyristor when auxiliary thyristor will be triggered then the voltage drop across the, this main thyristor will be negative because of this capacitor see when i will trigger the auxiliary thyristor then the voltage drop across main thyristor will be negative means this th main thyristor will go into the reverse blocking mode and it will turn off so when tm will be, will be on then tm will go into the reverse blocking mode and it will turn off and again supply will charge the capacitor in the first manner that is the from plus to minus and at the time of triggering of auxiliary thyristor the output voltage i will get that is equal to 2 vs by applying kv okay in this way i will get capacitor current thyristor current main thyristor current voltage drop across capacitor as well as the output voltage now we will find the formula in each and every mode so first formula we have to find peak value of current in main thyristor see the peak uh, itm waveform so this will be the peak value of current in main thyristor this is this is equal to i naught plus icp we have already found so peak value will be i naught plus icp that is equal to i naught plus vs under root c by l now ita peak what is the peak current in auxiliary thyristor see in mode 2 in mode 2 i am triggering the auxiliary thyristor right so auxiliary thyristor is nothing the current flowing in auxiliary thyristor is nothing but it is equal to the load current only you can see that when ta will be triggered tm will be off and in the in this time the load current is equal to the auxiliary thyristor current so it will be equal to i naught now say third point is minimum turn off time of tm main thyristor we have to find the minimum turn off time see here i am triggering the auxiliary thyristor at this time t2 okay now if i will trigger the auxiliary thyristor at this time when i will trigger the auxiliary thyristor at this time then tm this main thyristor will go into the reverse blocking mode at this time only okay so what will be the turn on time of minimum turn off turn on time of main thyristor minimum turn on time of main thyristor will be equal to t on and that can be found by icp sin omega naught t that is equal to zero so omega naught t will come out to be pi so t will come out to be pi under root lc that is equal to t on this is pi okay this is pi so minimum turn on time of main thyristor i will get when ta will be on at omega t is equal to pi okay 
so minimum turnaround time will come out to be pi under root lc and that is also equal to minimum turn off time okay now the fourth point is circuit turn off time we have to find the circuit turn off time circuit turn off time is defined as the time for which thyristor main thyristor is in reverse bias see here in mode 2 main thyristor is going to off when ta will be triggered then this tm will be in off state because of negative voltage drop across this thyristor like this this is the polarity na so negative voltage will drop across this main thyristor so it will be off so uh, i can define the circuit turn off time that is the time for which thyristor is in reverse bias so thyristor is in reverse bias when the voltage across this thyristor will be in negative so when capacitor voltage will be negative means this is in reverse bias got it reverse blocking mode so see here capacitor is negative from minus vs to zero okay after that the voltage drop across this capacitor will be positive so this thyristor will go into the forward blocking mode but circuit turn off time is defined as the time for which the thyristor is in reverse bias so thyristor is in reverse bias for this time only this is the circuit turn off time so how will i find this tcm see here we know that vc of t is equal to 1 upon c integration of i dt okay so i can say that when voltage drop across this capacitor will move from minus vs to zero this is vc of t is equal to 1 upon c circuit we will get circuit turn off time 0 to tcm and in this range the current flowing in this capacitor will be equal to i naught so it will be i naught dt so find this you will get tcm circuit turn off time that is equal to c vs upon i naught this is the circuit turn off time of main thyristor so it will come out to be c v s upon i naught what is the conduction time of auxiliary thyristor see auxiliary thyristor is conducting t a is on from here and t a is off here so auxiliary thyristor is conducting from here to here that is equal to 2 c 2 t c m so it is equal to 2 t c m that is equal to 2 c v s upon i naught last one is the output voltage output voltage i can easily find in one cycle in one cycle output voltage is this this much so if i will find the area under this waveform then it will give the output voltage now this is the time t on total on time of main thyristor is this much so this is t on and this is 2 tcm after that this is 2 tcm so it will come out to be vs into t on plus this is triangular waveform so it will be 1 by 2 into 2 tcm peak voltage that is 2 vs so it will be equal to 1 by 2 into 2 vs into 2 tcm upon total time t okay so finally it will be equal to vs into t on plus 2 tcm upon t this is the average output voltage in class d commutation okay so these all formula you have to keep in mind then only you would be able to solve the uh, problem based on class d commutation that is the voltage commutation why this is known as voltage commutation because here the voltage is responsible for the negative voltage is responsible for turning of the main thyristor in mode 2 you can see that the capacitor voltage probability is from minus to plus like this so this voltage is responsible for turning of this main SCR that's why it is known as voltage commutation okay so remember this all formula this will help you in solving the question so in this way we have completed the commutation circuit that is the natural commutation as well as forced commutation okay in the next lecture we will see the previous year gate problem based on commutation circuit okay so if you guys understood the concept then please like this video and subscribe to this channel for doubt solving you can join our facebook group thanks for watching this video